Hey, you're watching the third video in my series on how to make animations for Doom modders. In the previous two episodes, we talked about both how to pull files out of the PK3 and WAD files that make up most Doom mods, and we also talked about the basics of using Photoshop to do some sprite editing. In another series, I'm going to go into more detail on how to use Photoshop to actually make these sprites, because the tutorial I gave was really only something meant to get you started. If you're already familiar with both of those topics, you don't really need to watch those first two episodes. In this episode, however, I'm going to really start digging into After Effects, which is the tool I use to do most of my animations. To begin with, let's look at some of the things I've already prepared. We're going to be working with the fists. You'll see that this is similar to what I had earlier, but I've added a few files. The fists idle, this is an original frame that will help line up all the stuff. I've taken the left and the right fist, and I've separated them so I can use them individually and animate them independently. I've also got an image of Doom Guy's fist in an uppercut posture. Before we begin, I'm going to do a little bit of organization. I like to keep the development folder around so that I can put stuff in and not really worry about how it's organized. But for this example, I've already done most of that thinking, and so I'm going to skip ahead to the animations folder. I like to keep the animations folder very organized, because that's going to be where I spend a lot of time when I work with this, and where I actually output final products for use in Doom mods. So let me just move everything in there. In Windows, to select multiple files at once, you can click and drag, or you can click on one starting file, and then shift click on an ending file, and Windows will select all of the files between. Now inside the animation folder, I like to have a frame pieces folder. This folder is where I keep many of the files that I use to actually animate. You'll see what I mean in a moment. So now that we're organized, let's go ahead and open up After Effects. And here it is, After Effects. This is where all the magic happens. So just like Photoshop, After Effects has workspaces where you can arrange all of the windows and pieces to fit the needs of the task you're doing. Right now, I have Standard selected. So if you don't see this, then you can simply click on Standard. Or if you're on Standard and it still doesn't look like that, you can right click on Standard and click Reset to Save Layout. Now one of the first things that I like to do is to clean it up. So in order to get rid of some of the windows I don't need, I could just right click and click on Close Panel. You can also go to Window and uncheck the ones you don't need. I do need the Alignment Panel. Now I also don't like it being down here, so again, just like in Photoshop, I can bring this up by clicking and dragging, moving it to an edge, and putting it where I would like it to go. It also does not need to take up this much space as the Alignment Panel is actually rather short. Now, of course, this is just how I do things. Your mileage may vary. Okay, so what are we looking at? This is the Effects and Presets panel. We don't often need content from here, but it's useful to have when we do. After Effects has a number of effects that you can apply to things, and this is where they all live. The alignment has tools to align sprites and things of that nature. The Composition panel is kind of what it sounds like. It's going to show you the compositions. In this context, a composition is literally an animation. The project panel is where all of your files are going to be organized. And the timeline panel is where the meat and potatoes of your animation stuff is going to take place. We're going to be spending a lot of time here. Notice how there's a blue outline going around this frame. That's the highlighted frame. Your key commands will change based on which one of these things is highlighted. So please be aware of that. If you have the wrong one highlighted and you press a button, it may do something different or do nothing at all. Also, if you need to quickly look at a panel in full screen, simply highlight it and hit the tilde key. That's the key that's right next to your one key on the keyboard. Looks like a little wavy line. Hit it again to minimize it. So that's the basic interface. Let's go ahead and load in some footage. To do that, I'm going to go over to my project panel, click it, and double click in the empty space here. I'm going to navigate to where my files are, so I'll go to the desktop, do modding, fists, animation, frame pieces, and here are the four things that I'm going to bring in. I'm just going to go ahead and select them all and drag them all in at once. For right now, leave multiple sequences and create compositions unchecked. And just click import. And there you have it. I like to have a very organized structure inside After Effects as well. So I'll go down to the new folder icon and click it. And I'm going to say frame pieces. Shift click, drag all these into frame pieces. And open it up so we can see them. 
Now we're going to do something special. We're going to create a new composition, which as I said earlier, is essentially our animation. You can take a frame piece, click and drag it down to this icon here, let it go. There's a few problems right off the bat. The first is the render quality. You'll notice that it's very pixelated. That's because the computer is not rendering the frame at a very high resolution. If you want to change that, go down to here where it says quarter, click on it, and go to full. There we go. Second, you'll notice this animation is just a square. We actually want this frame to be the size of the normal screen, so in this case, I'm going to make it 320 pixels by 200 pixels. I found that that resolution makes the weapons I develop look exactly like it should in the Doom universe. To change the composition settings, either press Ctrl K on Windows, I don't know what it is on a Mac, but I imagine it's probably Command K, or click on Composition and Composition Settings. A couple of things to note. First, you'll notice that the width and height are 220 pixels by 200 pixels. We're going to want to change that. But you'll also notice that lock aspect ratio has been clicked. Let's uncheck that because we don't want that ratio. Very good. The next thing you'll notice is the frame rate. What you want to do is set that to 35. The reason we set this to 35 is because, at least at the time of recording, Doom runs at 35 ticks per second, where a tick is essentially a frame. So if we set the frame rate to 35 here, we should see something very close to what we'll see in the game. The last thing we're going to change is the duration. The last two digits here is a frame number. It will be out of 35 frames, which is why it says base 35 here. Right now this says there are 16 more frames at the end of that last second. I'm gonna go ahead and make that zero, zero. That 19 there is the number of seconds. Let's just go ahead and make a two second animation. I can't just put a two there, I should put zero two. And don't worry about background color, we're gonna do something different there anyways. And let's do that and click OK. We can now click on the timeline here and scrub the playhead around. Let's go ahead and make a simple animation to demonstrate how the timeline works. So let's click on the timeline, click on this layer, this layer behaves exactly like layers in Photoshop, only there's a lot more options with what you can do with it. For example, if I press the P key, that will bring up the position property. The position is currently 160 pixels along the X direction and 100 pixels along the Y direction. You'll notice that if I click and drag, I can move it. Increasing the Y value pushes it down, which I'll undo here with Control Z, and increasing the X pushes it to the right, which I'll also undo with Control Z. The timeline here has been broken up into frames and sometimes seconds. This O2F stands for the second frame. O4F stands for the fourth frame. If you want to zoom in or out, simply hold Alt and scroll mouse wheel up or down. The way we animate this is with what are called keyframes. You can think of a keyframe as simply a way of saying, at this exact time, I want this attribute to be this value. So for example, if I wanted to keyframe the position, I can simply click on the stopwatch icon here, and that will add a keyframe. You'll notice that if I move the playhead off, that there is a diamond. A gray diamond means it hasn't been selected. If I highlight it, it'll become blue. If I want to add a second keyframe, well, I don't want to click the stopwatch icon again, oddly enough. The reason is because if I do that, it destroys all keyframes. That stopwatch icon doesn't necessarily say add a keyframe, it says this is a property that even has keyframes in the first place. Instead, we're simply going to turn this one back on and we're going to add keyframes manually. So I'll move the playhead back to the beginning and I'll click on this icon. This says add or remove a keyframe at the current time. So I'll click it and you'll see I get a second keyframe. Now I can take these two position variables, X and Y, and change them for each keyframe. In order to change a keyframe, I simply move the playhead to the keyframe I want to change and edit the property. To edit a property, you can either click on it and type in a number, or I can click and drag on it. Let's undo that. So right now, the Y value is at 150, and you'll notice it's off the screen. Now what would it look like if I moved the playhead forward? Well, let's think about it. When I made this frame right here, the value was where it was in the first place, at 100. And sure enough, if I click here, you'll notice my Y value is 100 again. But what about in between? Ah, well here's the magic of After Effects, and this really is one of the most important things I can teach you. 
and that is tweening. That is to say, After Effects is going to take the value as it was here, at the first frame, take the value at the last frame, and figure out where it should be in between. That's why it's called tweening. In this case, it simply goes from 150 to 100, so we would expect 125 in the middle, which is exactly what we have. Now, one of the reasons this is so powerful is because I can actually change that tweening by changing how far apart these keyframes are. So if I click one keyframe and I drag it out, it will adjust accordingly. And if I move the playhead, you'll notice that it moves evenly into position. Each one of these is exactly what you would expect. This is 100, this is 110, this is 120, and so on. You can actually see this represented on the screen here in the center. You'll notice you have a destination represented by a square here and here. You'll also notice you have these little tiny dots. Those each represent the location of a tweened frame. And you'll notice this diamond in the middle. This diamond is the anchor point for this sprite. We'll talk more about anchor points later, but for right now, just understand that it's going to be the thing that actually moves, which is why the motion of this looks like it's centered here. As I move the playhead here, you'll notice that diamond moves also. Okay, but what happens after a keyframe? Well, if you go to the last keyframe of an attribute, you'll notice that afterwards, it's never going to change again. There's no keyframe telling it where to go, so it's simply going to retain the value that it last sees, which in this case is 100. So if I scrub the playhead, it's not going to change. Now, what properties do we have available to us? Well, we have a couple. Let me close this, and I'm gonna click it again, and you see a whole bunch. This is what's called the transform effect, and all of the sprites you're going to add will at least start life with this. It has a couple of simple controls for you. You can see the anchor point here, and it also has a position. But again, we're gonna talk more about that later. The position is the location of that anchor point on the screen itself. In the very center, you would expect it to be 160 by 100, because that's half of 320 by 200. You'll also notice the scale here is set to 100% and 100%, and it's also got this little icon next to it, which means they're linked. Normally, if I click on this attribute and drag, it'll change one and the other at the same time. Let's undo that. But if I click on this link icon, they'll no longer be linked, and so I'll only be changing the X attribute in this case. Let's undo that. The rotation is what you would expect, except there's a few other details. Because this is a timeline animator, you want to go more than just 360 degrees. Because, for example, you may have something rotating more than once on a screen. So in order to represent this, there are two numbers. The first number is how many times you've done a full rotation. The second number is how many degrees you have in that rotation. So if I click on the first one, nothing's going to change because I'm rotating it 100 times 360 degrees, which means it's not changing. Let's go ahead and undo that. But if I change the number of degrees, that will be visible. You'll also notice that this is rotating around the anchor point. The last thing you can change is the opacity. That's how opaque it is. At 100%, it is completely opaque. That is to say, completely visible. If I click this and lower it down to zero, you'll notice it becomes invisible. We're going to use this very often, but we're generally going to be either turning something on or off, so we're either going to be going between zero and 100% or vice versa. So let's go ahead and undo that. So let's delete these keyframes. You want to be careful here, because where you delete them will determine the value that's left over. For example, if you delete them right now, the X and Y values will be 160 and 100. This is pretty much what we want. However, let's see what happens if we make a mistake. I'm going to undo that. And I'm going to move the playhead to the first frame. If I delete them now, you'll notice that it retains the value that it had at that keyframe. In this case, the Y value is 150, which means it's off the screen, and this isn't what I want. Take this as a lesson that I've had to learn many times. Put the playhead where you want it, and then delete the keyframes. If you make a mistake, however, just hit Control Z, put the thing where you want, and hit Delete. Boom, fixed. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. This was just an introduction to the layout of Adobe After Effects. In the next video, I'm going to go into the actual animation process and show you the way I create an uppercut. Thanks for watching.